Crude uh, taking a bit of a break today. It has been on quite the run. And you, Josh Brown, have your mind on energy, and you're looking at some stocks specifically that you think are looking pretty interesting these days. I do. Thanks, Scott. Last week, as my final trade on Thursday, I wanted to highlight IEO, which is the Explorers and Producers ETF. It tends to own the more high beta energy names. Everything I'm about to tell you also applies to the larger names. The entire group is going higher, in my opinion. I think this could be a leadership group when we look back in December, uh, just based on the strength that I'm seeing here. And I want to take you to trade school for two seconds. You'll hear this term tossed around a lot on, on this network and others, overbought. And a lot of people don't even understand that, that there's a statistical definition to overbought. And what they further don't understand is overbought is not necessarily negative. So the connotation when someone says, oh, that stock's up too much, it's overbought. Ask yourself the second question, though. Why is it overbought? Is there maybe a fundamental reason why everyone is accumulating this stock? There might be. Maybe it's overbought because the stock is going to keep going and go higher. So you have overbought names in the energy patch right now. And I, and I, I submit to you, that's not a reason not to be in them. Maybe you don't buy them right this second. But here's what I want you to consider. You have the average RSI, that's relative strength, at about 78 in the XLE, which is the energy ETF, the largest cap names. This is the highest reading of all time for the RSI in the XLE. We have data going back to 2004. So in two decades, we haven't seen this much buying pressure in these names. And I'm telling you right now, to me, that doesn't feel like the top. That feels like a reintroduction to this space for people who haven't looked at it in a couple of years. Now, you look at crude at 85, the highest level since October. It's up 17% year to date. Then you think about how underweight most managers are to the E&P names, and you get excited. So here are some we charts that look that. exceptional. Carrie, I'm going to come to you in a minute. <laughs> ConocoPhillips, this is the largest component in the IEO ETF that I just mentioned. It's about 18% of the weighting. This thing is on fire. Marathon, MPC. Take a look at Diamondback, F-A-N-G, cute name. Um, the other one is uh, Phillips 66, which is, of course, a refiner. These stocks are all overbought. That's short term. In the longer term, there's a reason this much money is piling into these stocks. And I urge you, if they're not on your ticker, put them on your ticker, keep an eye on them, because I think there are some really exciting things developing. Bill okay. Baruch, I mean, so you've got Marathon, you've got 66, you have Exxon, but what about Josh's thought here? I agree totally with them, and that's why we've leaned into the refiners. That's why I love they're, you. They're not, yeah. yeah. They, that's why that uh, four to five years it takes to build more refining capacity. And so right now, it's we are constrained. And this, in this market right now, you have crude oil elevating a bit. You have moonshots, really, with Marathon Petroleum, Fang, Phillips 66 setting record highs. Um, I'm going to continue to lean into them. And, and as Josh's point as well, th things can say overbought. And if you look at Marathon over the last year, it just consolidates for a little bit and then goes back up again. So I, I really love the space. And crude oil is in backwardation, which is very tight supply and high demand right now. Carrie, Liz, do you guys also want to agree with me? <laughs> Who wants to agree with me first? I do agree no. on energy. I do. <laughs> All right. Um, I mean, look, there's there's a lot of different reasons to own it right now, especially if you're worried about a reacceleration in inflation, which I am. I think energy has been a driver of that. The correlation between oil prices and real yields is very, very tight. I think that continues to go up. Plus, you've got energy stocks that are paying a decent dividend, and people want dividends right now if they're worried about rates coming back down. So it almost works for both of those schools. I, I would say that another way to play energy right now is natural gas, which has done nothing but go down. And if crude continues to go higher, natural gas will eventually see an as a stock that we think is very interesting. And it's a different cap name, different cap base, but um, a, I, I think you can do both. I, I would have, I would kind of disagree with that. I, I've been saying this for a couple or a month now or so. Natural gas has fallen out of bed pretty hard. You do yeah. not see markets like this stop going down until there's a big capitulation. As a futures trader, I am staying very far away from natural gas at the moment. So I would be very cautious. What case. about um, we can look also uh, the Diamondback again. It's Marathon. It's 66. It's it's Conoco. So you know specific in some respects to refiners. Um, there are others, by the way, who, who love this trade. It was the best in March. Yep. And your overall suggestion is that it could, it could keep going. I, I would, the four names that I just mentioned, here's what's fascinating. 
yes, the stocks are up a lot, but you're not overpaying necessarily for these names. The median trailing 12-month P.E. ratio for those four is 11 times. The median price to free cash flow is 13. Um, you've got 7% expected earnings per share growth over the next year. So these are not like horrifically overpriced, monstrous semiconductor stocks. That's not what's going on here. These are under-owned, underrated names that people haven't paid attention to uh, really until the last month or so. So I think that's really important. The second thing I would say, and this is a market-wide thing that I want you to understand, we keep a list of the best stocks in the market. And some of the things that we're using uh, for, for inclusion, we're looking at relative strength. We're also, of course, looking for profitable companies. We're looking for companies that are within spitting distance of uh, new 52-week highs. The most stocks in my list right now, if you look at the 11 sectors, uh, are coming from the energy space. I got 13 of them from energy out of a list of 68. So there's something happening here that people should just keep in mind. Now, when do you buy them? Well, here's the thing with overbought stocks. RSI is at 78, probably not like the all-time greatest entry. So you're looking for low volume pullbacks in these names to start a position. In my experience, you will get them. On a day like today and yesterday, it feels like, oh, it's never going to pull back. It left without me. I get it. I understand that feeling. I have been through that before. You'll get it. Wait for those low volume pullbacks. Wait for the downgrades on valuation or whatever nonsense. That's when you want to get excited. All right. Wait till the upgrade on valuation. Many of these banks, like Ooh, a Morningstar, like they're they're going to they're marking these companies, these, these oil stocks, to sixty and seventy dollar oil. Imagine if we have oil above eighty for a longer period of time. They're going to raise that, which means higher cash flow.